Funding for Off 90 is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota. Cruising your way on this episode of Off 90. We bid farewell to a festival in Lanesboro. We attend a concert in Rochester. And we travel back in time in Albert Lee. It's all just ahead, Off 90. <laughs> Hi, I'm Barbara Keith. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Off 90. When We Dead Awaken is the name of the final play Norwegian playwright Henrik Ibsen wrote in his lifetime. It's fitting that the play was also one that was performed at the final Ibsen Festival in Lanesboro. After 20 years, the organizers at the Commonweal Theatre felt it was time to close the curtain on the festival's run. Which is what you said you wanted to do. I've seen enough. Do you think the sea will be better for you? It'll be a change. We are ending the Ibsen Festival. So we've been doing Ibsen for 20 years. And it's been a great relationship. 20 is a good, a mile, good milestone figure. 20 years is a long time to do uh, a thing. I'm Adrienne Sweeney. I am the Associate Artistic Director at the Commonwealth Theatre. Henrik Ibsen is the father of modern drama. The reason actors and theatre professionals love Ibsen is he really ushered in a new style of theatre. Is that a threat? How can my leaving you be a threat? No. You're right there. We wouldn't have Law and Order, we wouldn't have any of the dramas that we watch today if it wasn't for Ibsen. Ibsen broke down that fourth wall and allowed us into people's homes, to people's psyches, to really explore their inner dimension, their relationships. My name is Jeremy Van Meter. I am both a resident acting ensemble member at the Commonweal. My official title within the company is Communications and Marketing Manager. The Commonweal is a small professional theater company. Uh, we uh, operate under um, a, a rare model in the theater world, which is the artist administrator, which means all of the members of the company are both actors, but we also fulfill an administrative task within the company. So the Commonweal got started in 1989. Uh, the Lanesboro uh, Arts Council was heavily involved. They invited Eric Bungie, who was a Lanesboro resident, uh, native resident. He had moved away. Uh, but they invited him to come back and start a small professional theater company. The first summer was 1989. Uh, they ran two productions for 11 weeks, um, did that the next year, uh, and, then, and then the idea really started to, to, to sink in that, wow, we've really got something that could be really special here. So that was the, that was the foundation of, of the Commonweal. It worked. And, and now we have an 11 month season. Did you say something? Shh. Listen to that. What? That. And we see over uh, 20,000 people a year. The word commonweal means, uh, it's old English for the common good. So when Eric Bungie, the founding artistic director of the theater, was looking for a name, he was literally going through the dictionary and came across that. But that, that sounds like it's exactly what we want to do. The, the storylines and the themes and the topics in a great murder mystery on television or in film, some of those elements uh, we owe to Henry Gibson. This is sport, is it? <laughs> My favorite. Up there. Ibsen sort of brought that down to, okay, how do, how do you and I relate to each other, and how can I make that into a powerful story? Ibsen brought me to the Commonwealth Theater Company. I, I had never been down here, so now as I was driving down 8, Highway 8, I thought, this is the most beautiful place I've ever been. And once I got here and saw how 
committed this company and the ensemble members were, I thought, oh my gosh, this is it. I was cast in Enemy of the People in 2001 and uh, that was the first show I did here and the rest is history. He is second uh, in line with Shakespeare as far as a, a classical playwright who is popularly produced. He's a bit of an acquired taste as a playwright. Um, most of his plays um, are very uh, dark in nature. At every station there were the same two men railway workers, I suppose, walking up and down the platform with lanterns, murmuring. It wasn't silent if there was talking. Talking about nothing. Low. Meaningless. Uh, some of the th same things that we are dealing with as, as human beings line up with the things that, that Henry Gibson was writing about. And I think that's why they were so popular here for, for 20 years. And over the years, I've watched the company become more involved in the community, and the community is an amazing place to live. There are a million ways that people can spend their free time and their money. Um, you know, they could stay at home in their pajamas with popcorn and Netflix and see great TV. You can see anything you want. So when you choose to come to the theater, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful anytime someone plunks down their money, and more importantly, their three hours to walk through our doors. It made a name for this theater company. Uh, the festival was, was recognized on an international basis. So we feel like it really, it lived its life. It was time to open up the, the boundaries a little bit. We will be doing Ibsen again because so many of us love it. Isn't it time passing faster and faster? I won't endure this any longer. What's next is we're just going to start exploring shows that we've wanted to do. So it isn't uh, a farewell to Ibsen so much as an until we meet again to Ibsen. For the last 24 years, the City of Rochester has been organizing summer concerts in Mayo Park alongside the Zumbro River. Riverside Concerts was a bold experiment that has paid off with years of great entertainment. We spent a delightful summer evening with the Weathered Heads and America, just soaking up the vibe. What a great way to wrap up your weekend. We're going to play all original music for you tonight if that's cool. Riverside Concerts, which is the brand behind Down by the Riverside, Riverside Live, was started as a music department in 1936. In the early, early days, um, the citizens of Minnesota taxed themselves to provide music on public squares and streets. That was really the genesis of the music department. And so our park band has a history that goes to the 1890s. The Brothers Mayo thought it would be important for the city to start a music department in part to help them recruit and retain physicians. My name is Steven Schmidt. I'm the general manager of the City of Rochester Music Department. If we're known as Rochester Civic Music to some or Riverside Concerts to others, it's all the City of Rochester Music Department. Down by the Riverside was born to be something that we would do in the summer to offer a broad range of musical offerings. So that the public could enjoy music throughout the entire year.
When the concert series began in 1992, um, it was very much an experiment. And we had no idea where it was going to go. In fact, um, we don't have a lot of photographs from the early years because who would have dreamed that it would become so successful? Since that time, we've offered a broad range of things, including world music and rock and roll and classical music and jazz. So now that we've evolved and we're bringing in some really big name headliners, we maintain our commitment to book local artists. What's up Rochester? How are we feeling this evening? For those of you who don't know us, we are the Weathered Heads. We're from Winona, Minnesota. We've been waiting for this show for a long, long time. Weathered Heads is another example of our commitment to serving regional artists uh, with, with uh, a tie to southeastern Minnesota, be it Winona, here in Austin, in Rochester, up in Cannon Falls, Red Wing. It really doesn't matter if uh, a member of a band can demonstrate that uh, they got their start here in southeastern Minnesota. Um, um, they are put into a pool that then we adjudicate. Thank you all very, very much. I like to think of down by the Riverside as being one of those programs where we don't do every concert for everyone, but in every year, everyone should find at least one concert that might resonate with them. What's better than summer in Minnesota? Our portfolio at Riverside Concerts is as diverse as the Down by the Riverside Concert Series is. In addition to doing Down by the Riverside, we do the programming of the evening bands for Thursdays on 1st and 3rd. We have an indoor concert series called Riverside Live that takes place inside the Mayo Civic Center. On the day that I turn ten, the years all come and go. We have a commitment to she do world music. We do residencies throughout the area, the uh, throughout the southeastern Minnesota area that uh, uh, that focus on world happen. music. The years all come and go. A loaf of bread and a jar of jam. The years all come and go. They come and go. The years all come and go. They come what and people go. do during downtime matters. How do we recruit and retain the best and brightest to our businesses? Arts, music, all play a role in that. Um, what's the joy in living? It's not necessarily working eight to five at your job or you know, 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. in your lab. Um, there's much more to life. the more to life. Um, they understand the value of people being able to engage life and to live life to the fullest. And music is a key part of that. And 
So we add to the richness of the cultural tapestry that we're all weaving together here in southeastern Minnesota. That's my partner, Dewey Bunnell. Hey, all right, hello, folks. Great to be here. You're looking good out there. Nice to be in Rochester. The word rendezvous means to gather at a chosen meeting place, but it also has a special meaning for a select group of history lovers who strive to bring our past pioneering roots to life. Each year, the Big Island Rendezvous in Albert Lee does just that. And if you happen to stop by, you just might meet some trappers, Native Americans, and even Benjamin Franklin. Some people ask me, what, Perry, what do you do for a living? I said, well, I coordinate an event in October in Albert Lee. I bring my friends together for a weekend, and we have a celebration and a party. That's what I do for a living. And everybody laughs, but it's true. The importance of us talking about rendezvous now and the fact that we celebrate by doing rendezvous and historic festivals is we really want to keep the knowledge of how we existed generations ago and survived in the woods. We want to keep that to the forefront so people understand what everyone went through previously to what we have today. You get a history book and it doesn't tell you about people, it tells you about just certain parts of history. Well, when you come out to a reenactment, re you learn more, you see more. I believe children can learn more from a reenactment than they can a history book. And that's what got us going, because we just, we enjoy teaching history. Fire! A rendezvous, if you go by a strict definition, rendezvous is a French word, it means they get together. And rendezvous historically were a cross-cultural event where once a year, uh, the natives of the area would meet with outsiders who were visiting the area and trade their furs that their natives would have trapped for products that they would have used to make their life better or things that they would need. And so rendezvous has t uh, lasted probably about 40 years back in the early 1800s or, or late 1700s, early 1800s. It was a large social event. A, a, a rendezvous was a time that everybody could get together and find out what they needed to know. They'd been in the wilderness for a year, uh, now they want to catch up on the news, they want to barter with uh, friends and new acquaintances. It was really one time that the Native American and the European and the white Caucasian people got along and were compatible and they both needed each other. The rendezvous we have in Albert Lee started in 1987. So this is our 26th event this year. Uh, we started at a state park and Big Island Rendezvous had 46 participants the first time. The second year we, we tripled that and we got like, wow, what's gonna happen in the future? We better look for a better, not a better site, but a bigger site. And uh, it took us three years additional to make the transition to a city park. Today, 26 years later, we have over 1,200 participants compared to the 43 we had the first year. So, been a lot of growth, a lot of families 
uh, are involved in the entire event as a participant. I'm Robin Schmidt. I'm an owner of a clothing costume business and I travel around at Rendezvous. I was invited to a rendezvous by somebody by the name of Nobody who sells candy. Um, he's a crazy character and we went to see what one was like and we totally fell in love with it. The daytime was fun but once the candles were lit at night time and the fires were going it was a whole different atmosphere and we just, my daughters, my husband and I just fell in love with it and we've been doing it ever since. I'm portraying my, one of my great grandfathers whose name was Ole Olison. And they took the farm name when he came here to um, America. And so I chose him, and then I started researching our genealogy, and then I started reading Norwegian books. Then I went down to Decorah, Iowa, and did research down there, and went down there a couple times. And the program is constantly changing as I add new material, take some material out. So it's an evolving program. One of my favorite reasons for doing this event uh, is the fact that there's a group of people that like history so well and so much that they take their family and they camp primitive. They camp historically correct. They dress that way. They eat food. They cook over open fires. and. It is really fascinating to me to watch this whole process. It's certainly one of those things that I always take off work for. I'm always here. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, as a mother or daughter, you, you wouldn't find us off getting a manicure or something. No. We would rather no, come into the rendezvous. <laughs> preserve history, we have to do something like this. When you bring children out here, like the last two days here at Big Island, we've had children from all over from, from different schools, and they come out here, and they have no idea. You can read it in a textbook, but when you can see it in real life, it's like, totally makes different sense to somebody. I know I learn better visually than I do sometimes reading, and I watch the kids and their eyes just go, wow. They've probably heard it a hundred times, but until they see it and really realize that, wow, this is what it really was, it's amazing what they can do when you see something. I love the idea of it progressing and moving forward and children and other families learning uh, true history. And that communication makes it so much easier now to get the word out that, you know, history is not boring. It's not a bunch of dates. History is social, uh, how people existed and uh, survive and people have an interest in that uh, and so with this new communication we have through computers and internet I think that the old things of history our true founding fathers uh, legacy that they built is actually going to come forward and be known by more people than what we could do 20 years ago. I think people come here because it's one chance during the year that they can escape in a good way. They can go home, back to the regular world, nothing wrong with that. But they can say, you know, boy, I should appreciate this house I own. I should appreciate this apartment I live in. I should appreciate this car I'm driving. Because if I was born 250 years ago, this wasn't there. It was a hard, hard life. Boy, am I glad I have what I have today. Am I glad that I have my family and can offer my family what I can give them now. We have a wonderful event because the public like it. We have a wonderful event because the participants like the public.
that's all for this episode. If you enjoy programs like Off 90, please show your support by becoming a member of KSMQ Public Television. Keep local programming vibrant in southern Minnesota. Give us a call at 507-481-2095 or 1-800-658-2539 or sign up online at ksmq.org. Thanks for watching. Join us next time, Off 90. Feast, Irene, my darling, my darling, my love, my Irene. Yes. In the light, living in the light with the sun, looking down on us. In the light, in its heat, in the force of it, its power, all of it, looking down on us, in the darkness and the light. Will you come with me? Come with me, my bride, my gift of grace. I will follow my lord and master. Happy and free. First we must move through the fog. Yes, through the fog and the mist to emerge at the top of the mountain, bright in the dawn. Funding for Off 90 is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.